Hello everyone from Ford City. It's Wednesday, July 15th, 2020. I'm Chuck King sharing the daily Bible study with you. And we are now in Revelation chapter 7. Revelation chapter 7 beginning in verse 1. We're talking now about the final years of human history in the great tribulation, three and one half years of judgment and terror on the earth before the coming of Jesus Christ to rule and reign forever and ever. Verse number one, chapter seven, after these things, I saw four angels standing at the four corners of the earth, holding the four winds of the earth that the wind should not blow on the earth, on the sea or on any tree. So here we, we see John having a vision of uh, four holy angels holding back the winds on the earth. That would be devastating to hold back the winds that come from the, the spinning of the earth on its axis and also revolving around the sun we have god has created the winds for the earth that control all the climates and so there's no wind on on the earth or the sea or any tree verse 2 then i saw another angel ascending from the east having the seal of the living god and he cried with a loud voice to the four angels to whom it was granted to harm the earth and the sea. So another angel comes from the east with the seal of the living God. Did you know God has a seal that he places upon people? In fact, most people know a whole lot more about the mark of the beast, this counterfeit seal that the beast will use to mark people who follow blindly after his deception and who worship him. The devil's always trying to counterfeit what God does. And God, he knows that God has his own seal that he marks people with. We're not sure what that is, but somehow there's a way the Lord marks or seals his people who live on the earth. Now look what it says, uh, verse number three, saying, do not harm the earth, the sea, or the trees till we have sealed the servants of God on their foreheads. So this angel comes with the seal of the living God and he cried out in this loud voice to those four angels who were going to harm the earth and the sea. You see, what holding back the wind is part of the judgment of God to harm the earth and the sea. And the, this other angel says, don't, don't do your harm until we've sealed the servants of God on their foreheads. Now, again, the mark of the beast is on the forehead or the right hand. So this is a counterfeit marking by the Antichrist by Satan on the people that follow him. Verse 4, And I heard the number of those who were sealed, 144,000 of all the tribes of the children of Israel were sealed. So this mark or this seal of God is specifically placed upon Israelis, the tribes of Israel. It doesn't say other ethnic groups or other nations, but this is a seal of God that will be placed upon the tribes of Israel. Then he goes on to uh, mention in all, all the tribes, verse 5, of the tribe of Judah, 12,000 were sealed, of the tribe of Reuben, 12,000 were sealed, of the tribe of Gad, 12,000 were sealed. Of the tribe of Asher, 12,000 were sealed. Of the tribe of Naphtali, 12,000 were sealed. Of the tribe of Manasseh, 12,000 were sealed. Of the tribe of Simeon, 12,000 were sealed. Of the tribe of Levi, 12,000 were sealed. Of the tribe of Issachar, 
12,000 were sealed of the tribe of Zebulun, 12,000 were sealed of the tribe of Joseph, 12,000 were sealed, and of the tribe of Benjamin, 12,000 were sealed. So we have the angel of God holding back the judgment of God that the other four angels are going to to uh, put on the earth by holding back the winds. You see how the angels are involved in what God does. In this case, the judgment on the earth and the sea, but also the other angel on the sealing of God's servants from Israel, 144,000. Uh, whether this is a literal number or a number that denotes a, a, uh, a, a, a small but significant number of the population, 144,000. Uh, and now we're going to contrast that with the Gentiles that, that are John sees here, beginning in verse 9. After these things I looked, and behold, a great multitude which no one could number of all nations, tribes, peoples, and tongues standing before the throne and before the Lamb, clothed with white robes, with palm branches in their hands. So now John sees a tremendous multitude from every nation, every part of the world, every ethnic group. And where are they? They're standing in heaven before the throne of God and before the Lamb who is in the center of the throne. They're standing in the presence of God in the third heaven, and uh, uh, they are clothed in those white robes of righteousness that have been mentioned before, but they also have palm branches in their hands. Now, I, I know uh, one little bit about the palm branch that that was a, a sign of, of, of freedom and independence at that time in the Middle East, especially among the Jews. And so we have this great multitude with palm branches and in white robes standing in the presence of God. That's what John sees. You can't even count them. There's so many. Verse number 10, and crying out with a loud voice, they, they are all crying out this great multitude. Salvation belongs to our God who sits on the throne and to the Lamb. Verse 11, all the angels stood around the throne and the elders and the four living creatures and fell on their faces before the throne and worshiped God. So what a, what a, uh, what a scene. We've got the, the entire heavenly host, including this great multitude that came from all the nations, human beings, standing in the presence of God, worshiping him. And verse 12, amen, blessing and glory and wisdom, thanksgiving and honor and power and might be to our God forever and ever, amen. So the whole heavenly host is giving glory to the Father and the Son including this great multitude from every nation, tribe, and tongue. Verse 13, Then one of the elders, that's one of the 24 elders, answered, saying to me, to John, Who are these arrayed in white robes, and where did they come from? This question the elder poses to John, Who are these? This great multitude from every nation standing in white robes with palm branches in their hands. Who are they? Where did they come from? Verse 14, and I said to him, John said to him, sir, you know. So he said to me, these are the ones who have come out of the great tribulation and washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the lamb. So this elder explains to John who they are. John didn't know. The elder says, that this great number of people, this large harvest of souls, came out of the great tribulation. And they became Christians. They washed their robes. They became righteous people 
through the blood of Jesus Christ. They are Christian people who were saved during the Great Tribulation. And it's, a, it's such a number that nobody can even count them. This is a tremendous reference to this mighty harvest of God from all nations that will come in during the Great Tribulation, which is three and one half years on the earth. Verse 15. Therefore, they are before the throne of God and serve him day and night in his temple, and he who sits on the throne will dwell among them. So this is this is in the third heaven, in the throne room of God. Remember, we saw the souls under the altar before the earlier chapter in the throne room of God, crying out for, for God's vengeance on those who had martyred them. And now we see this great number again before the throne of God, serving him. It says they will serve him day and night. It's not like they're sleeping on their beds waiting for the resurrection. They are serving God in his presence in the third heaven waiting for their resurrection. And it says that the Lord will dwell among them. Verse 16, they shall neither hunger anymore nor thirst anymore. The sun shall not strike them nor any heat. So this is a, a, a direct reference to what they had come out of. They had from the earth, they were hungry. On the earth, they were hungry. They were thirsty. They were smitten by the, the hot sun and the heat on the earth. Verse 17, for the lamb who is in the midst of the throne, that's Jesus, will shepherd them and lead them to the living fountains of waters and God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. So Jesus is going to minister to this great throng of souls that have come out of the great tribulation as believers, out of the, the suffering that was going on on the earth. And Jesus will be their pastor. He will be their shepherd and lead them to the living fountains of waters, which obviously are in the presence of God, the living fountains of waters. And finally, he will wipe away every tear from their eyes. You know, we will go into the presence of the Lord with our full memory. We know that's true from the the uh, illustrate or the story, the account of Lazarus and the rich man. We know that the rich man could remember his family, could remember Lazarus. He could remember and and wanted. Them. Uh, uh, an ambassador sent back to warn his brothers so they wouldn't also die and come to that place of torment he was in. So there's a, there's a memory that's intact once you leave your physical body after death. And we see that also in the illustration of the souls under the altar crying out to God in prayer that he would avenge the blood of the martyrs. They remembered that they could not take vengeance as, as Christians, and that that was God's responsibility, and they were crying out for that. So they remembered what had happened to them. And here, the tears obviously would represent the painful life experience that they had on the earth before their death before they came into the presence of the Lord. And God has a supernatural plan to wipe away the sorrows, the tears from our eyes. So what have we learned here in this short chapter, chapter seven, we see, we see that God is going to pour out his judgment using angels to affect the, the winds of the earth so that they will, they will not blow on the earth of the sea. But before that happens, God will send another angel to mark 
a significant portion or 144,000 of the tribes of Israel with a mark of God on their forehead. And we're going to see later, this is a mark to protect them. And, and so the Lord will mark them through the angel. And then the, the scene shifts for John, the vision shifts to him seeing this huge number from all different tribes, nations, and tongues standing in the throne room before the Lord and before Jesus, the Father and the Son, in white robes and holding palm branches and crying out uh, that salvation belongs to the Lord and to the Lamb. And all the heavenly hosts will worship God. And as they worship God, and then John has that question posed to him by the elder, who are these people in white robes? Where did they come from? John didn't know. And, and so the elder explained that they had come out of the great tribulation and as believers. And they obviously had died there. Their, their bodies were not there, but their souls, their spirits were there in the presence of God. And the Bible says that they will serve him continually and dwell with the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, of course. And uh, there will be no more suffering because the Lord will take care of all of their needs, leading them to living waters and wipe away all their tears. This is another vision or uh, a series of visions that John had concerning the Great Tribulation, that three and a half year period that we will talk about over and over again here in the book of Revelation. So I know this is going to confuse some people or cause them to rethink their understanding of what's going on or will go on in the last days. But what is here will come to pass exactly as the Word of God says it will, whether we understand every detail and we don't or not. This is the plan of God to save a great harvest of souls during the Great Tribulation and to protect a remnant from Israel so that he might use them during the tribulation period on the earth. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for this short message from Revelation chapter 7. We ask you, Lord, to continue to give us insight so that we can embrace your revelation for the great tribulation, what's coming, what you, you are planning to do, what you will do, and how you will do it. We're thankful, Lord, for the for, that you are in control, that that the Lamb of God decides what will happen and when it will happen. But we know uh, that your mercy will come to an end and then your judgment will fall. We see that here in the book of Revelation. And you will begin to judge the people of the earth even while you are drawing a huge number of people to salvation through Jesus Christ, even during that great tribulation. So, Father, have your way with us in our day, in our generation. Prepare us for what you have for us to do the rest of our lives before you come for us. May you protect and deliver us from evil. Surround us with your loving kindness and compassion. And may your name be glorified through the good fruit that you will produce in us. We ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Thanks for being with us today as we study the Word of God. Thank you for seeking the face of God. We need to seek Him individually, and we need to seek Him together with other Christians, that God would move among the people, the multitudes out there among the nations. The vast majority are lost and need Jesus. So let's pray together for the move of God, that He would draw hearts and minds of the people to repentance and faith that they would be saved in these last days. Amen? Well, keep your eyes on Jesus. Be well and be safe during these critical days. And please share the teachings with your friends and family. God bless you.